There are, of course, other people involved in our operations who have, let's say, special, non-standard access, um, whom we sometimes neglect to think about and consider what we're going to do uh, in regard to uh, their access, what they uh, have, um, where they can get... Well, I mean, you know, it's not just the IT administrators, it's not just the, the security administrators and so forth. How about your cleaning staff? Uh, maintenance people. Uh, janitorial people, of course, um, are often asked to do their work after hours when nobody is even around to see what they're doing and they get everywhere. So, do we want them to be able to get everywhere? I uh, remember one story of a, a, a place that had a, a failure of their main server um, every night at 2 a.m. And uh, it wasn't until somebody decided to sit in this uh, the machine room all night, one night, that they realized that this was when the janitorial staff or person uh, got to the machine room and unplugged the server to plug in the vacuum. Uh, you know, uh, you have to consider about these things. Uh, again, you know, in a situation like that, it may not be an attack as such. It's still a problem. But it's just somebody who doesn't know any better. Uh, and so we've got to think about this. Um, you know, what about our, uh, our contractors, our suppliers, vendors, service, personnel, uh, coming in, uh, doing this stuff? It, actually, uh, Gloria had a, a wonderful um, way with the, the service personnel. She always wanted the, you know, she didn't, when somebody called a, a vendor to maintain a service a piece of equipment, uh, Gloria didn't just point at it and tell him to get at it. She always asked questions. What was he doing? What, uh, you know, uh, could have caused uh, the problem he was dealing with, if it was a problem, or um, what uh, should she do uh, to prevent a problem or to reduce the time uh, between service calls or to, uh, well, increase the time between service calls, to uh, reduce the number of service calls, to, uh, you know, how should she treat the machine? And she always got the best service of anybody in the company because she was interested. So, uh, you know, when you've got uh, vendor service or maintenance personnel coming in, um, yes, have someone accompany them, but don't just have it, you know, okay, you need to have somebody uh, with you because we don't trust you. No, ask questions. You know, get information. Um, and you will get better service because uh, these guys go in and out of companies all day long and are ignored everywhere they go. So if you don't ignore them, if you acknowledge their presence, acknowledge their value, ask them what you can do to make their jobs easier, they're gonna give you better service. Uh, you know, social engineering, once again, uh, pay attention to people. It's not just about the machines. Um, anyways, contract staff, temporary staff, um, what do we do about their access? Uh, again, you know, definitely least privilege in that case, but also um, uh, retracting the 
the access um, once uh, the temporary job is finished or uh, whatever it may be. So all of these uh, different types of things uh, that are part of our operations and uh, part of our security posture, part of our uh, what, uh, what do you call it vulnerability surface um, we uh, need to consider all the bits and pieces uh, as I keep on saying with regard to security you you can't see it as as an isolated thing as a um, an area uh, that uh, you know one tool will do the job or one size fits all know this you know, you you have an enterprise with a whole bunch of different moving parts you've got to pay attention to all of those parts um, all of the you know your personnel other personnel who are coming in to help you you know that's why they are called service personnel they are providing a service for you um, contractors clients um, in some cases, uh, you know, anyways, people, you know, who are not our normal employees, um, who don't have uh, the, the training that we give to our normal employees, um, or, you know, as in the case of the, the janitorial staff, uh, you know, maybe there is a, you know, additional piece of training that we need to do. Uh, I, I do remember one uh, job, don't know if I've mentioned this before, um, physical security and, and, uh, uh, the, uh, there was a piece of equipment that was not exactly out of service, but it was, uh, uh, kind of flaky and, and it might have, uh, failed. And so they wanted us to check it and make sure that it was, uh, operating and if it wasn't to start it up. And it was about a five-step process. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, they explained it to me. Okay, that's fine. I can do that. Um, but this was on a Friday night. And, uh, you know, I said, well, you give me, you know, written documentation for this to, to pass along to the next shift and, and through the weekend. And uh, the guy said, this isn't, you know, it's not terribly uh, complicated. I said, even so. It's not complicated. And so I turned to the manager and I said, Kevin's on this weekend. He turned to them and said, document the process. So make sure you do that.